In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create these soft waves using the T3 World Trio and the two new clip barrels, which is the convertible collection. So the first thing I do is take my hair out of the towel and rake through it with my fingers. If you need a wide tooth comb to really get any tangles out, you can use that. I use a lot of conditioner so I'm able to just kind of rake through it with my fingers. The first product I'm applying is Redken's Frizz Dismiss Smooth Forth Spray. This does a phenomenal job at cutting frizz. So I just sprayed that mostly on the top layer of my hair and I'm going to use my fingers to run it through. Next I'm using a quage uplifting foam right at my roots. Finally, because I'm a product junkie, Kevin Murphy's Anti-Gravity Spray. This I could relate closest to the Purology Levitation Mist. Both are phenomenal. So all of my products have been applied. I'm picking up the T3 Pro Eye Dryer. It is on medium heat. There are two speeds. I will go to the max. And then what I like about the cool shot button here is you pull it once and or like it's uh, click it once and it'll stay on cool so you don't have to hold it down the whole time if you're doing a cool shot or if you feel like the heat is a little bit too much even a medium you can just click it back to cool and it'll stay on cool so um, I'm going to the highest speed on medium heat I'm going to do a rough dry and then click the nozzle on and smooth it out okay so I'm turning the dryer off Grabbing one of the nozzles, clicking that on the end, grabbing my brush, and now I will smooth the hair. There's really no point in using the nozzle before you get to like, I don't know, 70 or 80% dry. It'll be a little bit quicker and you just need to focus the smoothing at the end unless you have particularly coarse hair. Um, but for me, I can kind of do a rough dry like you saw and then just smooth at this last part. So now that my hair is all dried, I am going to curl it. And what I'm working with today is the T3 Convertible Collection Iron. So what's neat is you, you buy the Convertible Collection and it comes with the base and then the Whirl Trio has three barrels that don't have the clip on it. So it acts like a wand, but you can buy two clip barrels separately if you want to use those as well. And they all click into the same base. So I actually thought I had this idea first, like seven to ten years ago. I thought, wouldn't it be cool if you could like clip different ends into like just the base and then it would save space and give you opportunities to try new irons without buying a whole other iron. Um, and this is kind of where like the technology comes in, but then the barrel, if you can just get different barrels. Anyway, I thought I had the idea and as it turns out T3 did as well, but they beat me to it. Um, so I was excited to give these a try and it has been really fun to play around with the different sizes. So the two sizes I will be using are the one and a quarter inch clip barrel. So that has the clip to hold your hair onto it. And then the one and a half inch wand. So sometimes you see wands that are tapered. This is a straight wand, so you'll have the same shape throughout. It won't, the tapered wands, you typically hold it like that and imagine it in a cone shape. And when you wrap the hair around it, the ends get a little bit more curly. I want more of a consistent curl, so I'm using the one and a half inch um, barrel. So once you've selected the end you want to use that day, you just click it into the base, nice and tight, and then you twist the base to lock it in place and then you can turn it on. And you'll know it's heating up because the blue lights will light up. So I'm using the clip barrel first because I'm going to be going around the bottom of my hair. I'm going to section it into three sections. So from my temples up and then from my ears up and I will start with the nape. The reason I'm using the clip barrel on the bottom is I, those curls tend to fall flat the fastest both on me and on most people. So I've found that the clip barrel allows me to hold the section nice and flat against the heat of the iron and make sure those curls get really curled to allow for the fact that they're probably going to fall out a little bit. 
and then the wand on the top two sections will give me like a really soft, relaxed curl. So we're starting with three sections. So clip barrels are great if you have heavily layered hair or if you need kind of that extra hold right against the barrel to make sure the curl holds really well. Um, with this T3 iron and other high-end irons, the heat is consistent and intense. Um, what I like about the material they use for this iron is the hair glides around it really nicely so it doesn't snag or get caught like down in the screws at all. I found that with the classes I've been teaching, uh, anyone that brings a cheaper iron, I often find that their hair kind of falls into the screws and it's just not as um, I feel like maybe it's a cheaper iron, they didn't pay as attention to detail as like T3 did for example to make sure your hair doesn't do that. So um, the, the clip end is great if you have layers or if you have particularly resistant hair. So since the hair at my nape tends to fall first, I'm going to use the clip barrel down here. So I will end up doing three sections, one on the left, one in the center, one on the right. Always smooth through your section before you curl. and. Putting it in at the root. Trying to keep the iron in the same place and just wrap the hair into it instead of pulling the iron down the hair. And then slowly dropping it down. And I'm gonna let the curl sit there before I rake it out. I want it to sit in the same pattern it was in, in the iron to reinforce the curl. So another thing about the clip barrel I like is it, it's great for hard to reach sections. Um, because you can either have both of your hands at the base twisting to make sure you're getting an even curl or you can grab the tip if you need to to help wind it up. You can also grab the tip of the wand's ends like this barrel that I'll be using on the top half. Uh, but you might want to wear the glove that they send just to make sure you don't burn your fingers since you will be holding it. Okay, so the nape is curled. I'm just going to push all of those behind and let them cool in the position they were in, in the iron. Okay, so I have inserted the one and a half inch barrel. It is warming up. This does not have a clip on it, so I will treat it like a wand. I'm gonna let down that middle section I clipped off. If you have trouble determining the, the section you did first when you drop hair on top of it, just unclip half of it and then deal with this section once you get to that side. So you'll get a glove with the World Trio, and I would recommend wearing it. Better, better safe than sorry. And these irons are hot. They're very effective, but they're very hot. When you're using a wand, you want to hold it upside down, so it's always pointed down. And you want to hold the hair about 90 degrees out from where, where it's starting from. So I'm going straight out from my head. You'll notice I'm not holding it down here because then I'd get really close to my ear and I wouldn't get the barrel in at the root like I need to. So we're going straight out. I'm going to keep the section as flat as possible. Wrap it around. See how close my hand is getting to the, the wand there? I'm, I'm glad I'm wearing this glove. I'll hold it there for a few seconds and then drop it down. I like to alternate directions to just give the curls a little life and variety. So this one I will be wrapping toward my face, starting close to the base and then adding the hair as I work my way down.
Okay, it's time to finish up. So I'm pulling out that top section. And I left the one and a half inch barrel on there. Establish my part from earlier. So the only thing I'll do a little different on this top section is hold the hair on there for less amount of time. So I want these curls to be nice and soft. Keep that out of the way. So I'm just gonna do a wrap, leave it on there for a second, and drop it out, and probably smooth it out with my fingers right afterwards so they look nice and soft. But notice I'm holding the section straight up. That will give me a lot of volume. So just a soft bend on the top. I just like that look a little better. You could, of course, hold it on there a little bit longer if you want more of a curl. But that's what's sort of fun about playing around with a wand is you sort of determine how tight the curl is based on how tight you hold the section against the wand, how big the section is, how flat it is against the barrel, and how long you hold it on there. So I'm also taking bigger sections here in the top so I get bigger, softer waves. So once your hair is all curled, I like to finish with a little dry conditioner, um, especially when I'm using a wand because your ends aren't against any heat to sort of seal them or smooth them out. Um, I like using dry conditioner just on my ends as I rake through it to polish them up a little bit. This, this part's optional, but I think it looks kind of nice. And then finally, I like to tease to add a bit of volume at my roots and some fullness in the middle. Um, and then I'll finish with a flexible hold hairspray. So when you're finished, you'll find that you still have a lot of curl on the bottom section because we paid special attention to it, but then you've got these nice, soft, relaxed waves on top. 
So this will wear really nicely as the bottom softens. It'll still sort of match the top section because that doesn't fall as quickly as the underneath part of your hair. So I, I kind of find that when I use a curling wand, um, I sort of like my hair once it's been lived in for about an hour because it sort of relaxes and settles and gets, gets to a really nice shape. Click the link in my description box to enter to win the same set of tools I used in this video. And you can also visit the blog post which has more photos and details about this style.